Hello and welcome to Oracle's News Radio. Today is Monday, August 8th, 2022. And we will discuss a very important topic. Don't I always say that? (laughs) And this one is pretty important. How to recover from your own death. How to recover from your own death. I am Renee Thomas, your host of Oracle's News Radio. Follow us by clicking the follow button on your screen and share this podcast with your friends and family to get the word out because I know there is something that they're going to get out of this that's going to be beneficial for them. We are a news podcast featuring current events, Oracle and prophetic news, indie music, astrology forecast and you can listen to us on blog talk radio spreaker tune in apple podcast spotify iheart radio and most other podcast platforms learn more about everything we do at anointedgroove.com that's a n o i n t e d g r o o v e dot com we want you to visit the information box and see how you can give to assist us in bringing you more content and giving us the time and opportunity to do more research to help to fulfill your life. We welcome back old and new listeners in the top countries who follow us in the United States, Mexico, Germany, Canada, Kenya, China, Russia, Algeria, Japan, Turkey, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, the United Kingdom, the beautiful South Africa and the Philippines and more. Thank you all for listening. I want to hear from you. So send me an email or leave a comment. Let me know how our podcast is affecting you. Before we get started, we want to remind you that you can test for COVID-19 right from your home. Visit the info box of this podcast for details about products that can help. So let's get started. How does one recover from their own death? I have come to learn that we do not die all at once unless there is some traumatic physical trauma that takes our lives. Like if you go through a sudden car accident or a gunshot wound, something like that. But typically, you're not going to experience that kind of trauma Most of you will live out your days and get to be elderly. And typically, if we live out our years, there will be gradual things and occurrences and issues, circumstances that happen to you to cause the flowers of life to lose petals until we sit before someone and you can find yourself telling them you're just tired. You're you're you lost your vision. You may have lost your purpose. You may have felt like things didn't go the way you thought they would. And now here you are not sure what to do. Finding yourself feeling emotional and having a hard time with which way to go. Yes, people can go to mental health clinics and talk to psychiatrists and therapists. But many times the drugs that they will put you on. And some of the therapies leaving you feel, leave you feeling worse than what you felt like before you started. However, what do you do if you are only between the ages of 25 and 55 plus and you have not lived out your promised years in life and you have not suffered physical trauma, yet you feel your life force slowly slipping away? How do you recall or regain your life force when I was a young girl I was pretty protected by parents and grandparents not everyone was the perfect parent but I had some really good adults around me and for the most part I felt safe even though I had a sense that maybe we didn't have as much money as we needed I went on to develop my dreams and really try hard to excel in school because I knew I wanted a scholarship to go to college. I had dreams. I had goals. I wanted to one day marry. I wasn't sure whether or not 
or how things would play out in the children department. But as I continued living, I began to learn some things. Sometimes you can be quite smitten with someone and you can agree to live your life with that person. And all of a sudden, things change. You grow. They grow. They shift. You shift. Feelings change. Now, what do you do? In addition to that, you may not be sure about what career goal you want to to follow. What do you want to do with your life? You may end up in a situation where you learn the hard way that there is no way possible to get up every Monday morning and do something you really don't want to do. As you shift, And learn more about yourself and who you are. There are times when you will even realize that some of the people that television and commercials and movies say are the closest to you will sometimes turn their back on you. And then when everything seems to be going perfectly, wham, here comes that one event. Or that one situation that basically knocks you off your feet. And I found myself faced with a life with young children and a spouse who no longer wanted to be a part of it. Now, why did he not want to be a part of it? He wanted to be a part of it at the beginning. Don't they all? Which is why they walk down the aisle with you. But after time, things change. People change. They want to go in a different direction. They get tired of what they're doing and want to do something else. They fall in love with other people, whatever falling in love is. Or they just are not mature enough to handle and face real life. And after all of the mental programming from the games, the movies, the education we really have to sit and face life so there you are you're recovering from some accident you've lost the use of some physical part of your body you've lost the love of your life and at that point it was all I could do to get by I was not an old woman not in my 50s barely in my 40s and here I am I have lost my vision all I could do was basically get by myself and mourn as if I was mourning a death many people who have lost loved ones in this pandemic or who felt like their parents would be with them forever and they have lost them and they are no longer there find themselves in situations where they are changing but are not ready to change. Maybe you lost your vision because the vision you thought it would be has now changed and you can barely believe it has happened. So I found myself in that time and I actually wrote about it in my book, Broken Heart, under the name author named Renee Taro and at that time I thought something else had happened because one particular night I was in the basement I was in the midst of mourning dealing with situations that were very very difficult feeling very alone not fully understanding that some of it had to do with evil eye and evil wishes that family members had put on me that was creating entities and servitors to keep my life in a mess and these same people who were trying to keep my life in a mess I was going to them and reporting to them all my trauma not understanding why they seemed so okay with it But they were okay with it because they were the ones wishing it on me. But yet at that time, I didn't understand that. 
there was just so much I didn't know. I was living in a new world with a, with a culture and a group of people who had lost our elders and we had lost most of our ancient wisdom. So I was on my own. And one day, sitting in that basement with tears in my eyes, no vision, no light, I began to feel a shift in the room. I felt a cool breeze pass over me. And all of a sudden, the pain was gone. At that time, I felt like this is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has come and delivered me from this pain. But as I lived on, I realized it was more than that. A part of me had left. From time to time, that piece of me would come back. And I would be thrown into that trauma again. But at that point, somehow, energetically, physically, in some way, I put it away from me. Because something deep inside of me knew it was too much for me to handle all at one time. I proceeded to get up and fix myself a sandwich. Because I had lost my appetite prior to that time. But little did I know, I had started to change. And that change was not necessarily headed in the right direction. As I lived on, I didn't necessarily do the work to lift my vibration. I wasn't sure what to do. I did keep going to church, to the Christian church. But somehow the Christian church had either lost its power or I was just not in a position to know how to get from it what I needed to get. I know that people say that the church is in you. But if you're filled with pain, there's not going to be much church that's left in you. So I continued to live. But I knew that a part of my happiness was gone. But I knew what I had to do. I had to be strong. I had to go on for my family. And I did just that. Well, a few years down the road, actually it was about six years down the road, the person who had caused me so much trauma passed away. And even though we had made up and we had become friends, that person had never done what they were supposed to do. They never paid the child support they were supposed to pay. They never respected me the way they should have. They never participated in the children's lives the way they should have. But I just accepted it because there is nothing else I could do. Some things you just don't know what to do. Yes, I could have gone to various places at the government and pulled money from their check. But this person, for the most part, they stayed underground. They had they knew how to make money without doing it in a way where their check could be garnished. So I just gave up. And I came up with the thought that somehow, some way, things would work out. Once this person passed away, I began to heal even more. Because sometimes we just need to be avenged. And I felt in myself that to some degree... Life, God, had avenged me. But yet, I still wasn't where I needed to be. My relationships with men were left devastated. My trust was devastated. My ability to trust. Later on, I decided that it was time to move into a different type of relationship. I was blind to myself. I knew I had changed. I knew I wasn't quite as happy as I used to be. But I wasn't fully depressed. I still had not identified my true enemies. 
And so as I went on, I met someone else. And in this relationship, things just seemed so right. But I probably moved a bit too fast. You have to be strong and you have to wait. And you have to know when you're ready to move. And you can't let anybody else tell you when it's time to move. To make a long story short, I got into a new relationship. And that relationship also was difficult because I had not truly healed from the last one. But as I give this testimony, I began to really pray and meditate because I knew that I had begun to lose my way. My energy had depleted. I wasn't able to just get up and go with a cup of coffee and a good shower. It took a long time for me to regain my energy. And without, within hours of regaining that energy for the day and throughout the work day, I could barely crawl into bed at about 7 p.m., 8 p.m., very early. And I was sleeping, but then I would wake up through the night. And it was starting to affect my physical body and deplete me of much needed vitamins. It wasn't until my physical body was sorely affected and I went to a doctor, got some tests and realized that I was really missing a lot of things in my blood and there were things I had to do physically. I also knew there were things I had to do emotionally. I began to meditate and pray and focus and breathe. Which brings me to the first way that you can begin to recall or regain your life force when you feel it slipping away. Nature and spirit are pretty much one. With with nature, we can communicate via our five senses. Sight, smell, taste, touch. Sight, smell, taste, touch, um, hearing. But through the spiritual senses, we have other senses that we don't yet recognize that also can affect our natural bodies and affect things such as temperature gauges, um, microscopes, various different x-rays. They can affect us. And the medical community will treat these illnesses and affects as physical disease. But if we don't get our spirits right, if we don't align our minds, they'll be treating us to no avail. And with all the prescriptions that I have been given, I know that it's mainly prescription drugs that kills people. The side effects, the way it affects your body. And the very imperfect way that doctors prescribe them. Sometimes when I think about all of the religions of the world, as I was seeking a path in spirituality, I would just want to cry. Because I felt deep down inside, like there really should be one truth. Why can't we just have a God that appears to us from time to time and just drives down here in a spaceship and let us see him? And even if he did that, we still wouldn't believe him. Many of us would reject him anyway. So I wanted to cry inside because I just seemed to not be able to find truth. And if you know anything about culture, when the truth that you find doesn't line up with culture, specifically Abrahamic cultures, where if you don't do it their way, you're automatically condemned to eternal death, it can be very stressful. I don't know why I felt this way, that there should be one way when we see that there are numerous elements in the chemical table, numerous races, numerous animals, numerous forms of plant life, etc. Earth tells us that it loves variety. I think I felt that way because that's how I was trained as a child. And it is vitally important that all religions and forms of spirituality cease and desist from promoting their forms of faith 
as the only one. There are numerous paths that lead to God. And one of the best paths is through nature. If you find that some of your rose petals have fallen off of you as a flower and you're beginning to lose faith and you're beginning to lose hope, get out into nature. Nature teaches us about family, love, protection, the importance of working as a collective. Nature teaches us about hybridization, the mixing of things and coming up with something new. Evolution, consumption, variety, growth, everything you can think of about life, you can learn in nature. Even if you are blind, you can feel, hear, smell, and experience nature. Which is why it is vitally important to touch base with it, even if by only opening a window in your home, if you are home ridden. Each part of nature affects another, from the quartz that turns the earth, to the birds that propagate trees, to the fish that feed us and keep our oceans clean, to trees that feed us and help us to breathe. And to our fellow mankind, we must connect with, learn about, study and consume nature in order to revive ourselves again after all of these circumstances which come in life. Number two, discover new love and purpose. I'm not talking only about a new mate because that may not be what you want. Having a new mate is a big stressful deal. But this could be by attaching to a new child that is born in your family. By deciding upon a new career that you want to get into. By realizing that it's time for you to embrace a new form of spirituality. It is time to discover something new, something that gives you purpose, something that teaches you a new thing about life that will spark interest in you, that will put you around a new group of people who will spark your mind and help to infuse new life within you. Discover something new that you love. Number three, refrain from negativity and unforgiveness. Even after the passing away of the person who harmed me the most, I still had the hurt inside of me. It had bore itself deep inside my heart to the point where Sometimes when I thought about getting into a new relationship, I would just break down in tears because I felt like nobody would love me. I had been through such a traumatic time. Some people who have gone through traumatic experiences such as rape or, a, or physical abuse, they can find themselves when opening up to the idea of something new, crawling back into a hole and re-experiencing that trauma all over again. We have to work to release it, let it go, find books from professionals who have studied these traumas, who can give you great coping me mechanisms. Talk to a licensed therapist, someone who can teach you about negative self-talk and how to get some of that narcissistic verbiage out of your mind because a lot of times what we do is we'll take what that person said to us and we'll begin to repeat it to ourselves and it creates more negativity more unforgiveness eventually causing us to turn on ourselves there are many many coping mechanisms that you can use music fresh flowers nature 
a refusal to be around anyone who does not value you. But one great way to refrain from negativity and unforgiveness is to identify your enemies. I'm not saying hate people that are your enemies or hate people who despitefully use you, but at least know who they are. Stop giving them fodder and ammunition to use against you. Stop telling them all about your life. Stay away from that person. Then they won't keep hurting you over and over again, causing your heart chakras to be blocked, which prevents you from speaking clearly, seeing clearly, and thinking clearly. Refrain from negativity and unforgiveness. Who is it in your life that always has something negative to say about you? It doesn't matter if they're your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse, your child. You need to put some separation and distance between you and that person as much as possible. Because all they will do is keep you in negativity and unforgiveness. And that seeps away your life. As you stay away from these people and begin to spend time with people who value you, you will find that the seeds of their words and the freshness of their love will begin to impart new life into you. Number four, and there are many more, many more ways than this. But number four is to accept and expect change. It is amazing to me how it takes so much for us to realize change is a part of life. Even living in America with so many shootings, and we hear about it all the time, it took forever for people to to want to stay home and not go into the malls and the grocery stores and to just order their things or pick them up at the stores. Because nobody would believe it. Everybody kept saying, this won't happen to me. This won't happen to me. Until it happens to you or somebody that you love. As much as we know that people can lose their lives or we can lose the lives of loved ones that we really care about. When we do lose a loved one. It is like a shock to us. Oh, I never expected that to happen. When there is one thing in life that is constant, there is one thing in life that never changes, and that is change. (laughs) Change is the only thing in life that never changes. So when you wake up and all of a sudden the person that you love is not there, Or you wake up and you're living in an empty nest when you used to be the bustling soccer mom who was constantly just carting around children and making cupcakes for their friends. And now you're at home alone with a man you don't know. Understand that you should prepare for change because change is coming. It's not wise to know that change is coming and not to prepare for it. Always have a plan B and a plan C so that it doesn't take you by surprise. Some things will take you by surprise, but at least if you adopt the notion and understanding that nothing is constant except for change, then you will begin to understand that nothing is really going to knock you off your feet. I recall going back to my testimony when I felt like the breath, or at least part of it, had been knocked out of me. Yes, heartbreak can be so bad that you cannot breathe. But then I heard my neighbor crank up their car and go on to work. And I heard the postman stop the car and Drop off the mail. 
And I heard the delivery trucks in the neighborhood delivering all the goods that people had ordered. And I thought to myself, I cannot believe these people. How dare they go on with life when I am faced with tragedy. I am a newly single mom. I am a newly single woman. I don't know where I'm going. And these people are going on with life. Understand that your change may not happen along the same timeline of people around you. Now, one thing that happened with the last pandemic is that we all went through change. Everybody lost someone that they knew or was related to. And nobody was alone. That helped us to some extent to go through it. But typically in life, we're all on different seasons. Your season is different from mine. We're not all going through winter at the same time. So expect that when your change happens, because it will, everybody else's change may not be happening. So it may appear to you that you're the only one. But trust and believe you are not. Accept and expect change. If you can't find anything to believe in, make sure as I go over these four different things to help you to regain your life, that you, number one, meditate, prayer, pray, and focus, breathe, and do work with the divine, if not any other way than through nature. There is no excuse. Number two, discover new love, new purpose via a new child in the family, a new mate, new career, a new form of spirituality, even rediscovering who you are. Number three, refrain from negativity and unforgiveness by understanding who your enemies are, ceasing and desisting, desisting from being around people who harm you and hurt you and create more negativity and unforgiveness, thereby blocking your throat, crown, and third eye chakras. And number four, accept and expect the one thing that is constant, and that is change. Embrace it. Understand that change is here for your evolution and that the only thing that is really constant is really you. Everything around you can change and even you will change, but it won't take you by surprise or undergird you so harshly if you expect it. I'm not saying to expect the worst. I'm not saying to walk around looking at the glass half empty, but understand that the change that come that comes in some way is going to come to make you better. We want to thank you listeners from whichever platform you're listening from. Remember to like and share. Visit us at anointedgroove.com. And remember, we're here to add value to your life and to keep you informed. Until next time.